Welcome to this YSL Report Builder tutorial. In this video, we'll explain how to use store procedures with parameters. We'll begin by explaining how to create a store procedure and then use that procedure to populate a data set in your report. We'll then explain how you can add parameters to the procedure and how to update the report to include those parameters. And finally, how to make your parameters in the store procedure optional so that you don't have to provide a value to every parameter each time you run the report. So let's get started. Here's an example of the type of thing we'll create in this video. If you've seen the previous few videos in the playlist, this should all look fairly familiar to you by now. We've got a table of films and some optional parameters to control which films appear in the table. If I don't provide a value to any of the parameters, I see my full list of films, but I can optionally provide a value to one or multiple parameters and then get a filtered list according to the values I've entered. So that's all fairly familiar, again, if you've watched the previous videos in the playlist. The difference here is that the dataset which populates the table and all the parameters are generated using a store procedure. So that's what we'll aim to create together in this video. If you'd like to follow along, there are a few things you'll need. Of course, you'll need a copy of the YSL Movies database. And if you haven't already got that set up, you can use this video to help you get that configured. And there's a link in that video's description so that you can download the script file that you'll need. You'll also need a copy of SQL Server Management Studio to work with. That's where we'll go to create our store procedure. And hopefully you've already got a copy of that set up. But if not, again, we have a couple of videos which explain how to install that for both SQL Server 2016 and for 2017. Assuming you've done all that, I've got a fresh open blank report waiting for me in Report Builder. And the first thing I'm going to do in here is create a data source to connect to the YSL Movies database. So I can do that in the usual way by right clicking data sources and choosing add data source. I'll call my data source movies and then use an embedded connection pointing to a Microsoft SQL server and then click the build button to get a bit of help building the connection string. I'll type in a shortcut to my local host dot backslash SQL 2017. And then from the drop down list towards the bottom of the dialog box, I can select my movies database. Having done that, I can click OK and OK again, and that's the basics of the report set up. Before we can create the data set, we need to create the store procedure which we'll use to populate it. So this is the point at which we'll head over to SQL Server Management Studio. I've already connected to the instance of SQL Server which holds the movies database, and if I look in the databases folder, there's the movies database sitting there. I'm going to start by writing a basic query to return the list of columns I want to display in my final report. So a quick reminder, that's going to be the title column, release date and runtime minutes. Now we could write this query from scratch, but it's probably more convenient here to use the query designer. We do have a separate playlist which explains how to write SQL queries. But for now, I'm just going to click the new query button. I'm going to make sure that I've got the movies database selected from this drop down list here. If it hasn't already selected that for you, please do make sure you've got the movies database selected. And then you can right click in the background of your query page and choose design query in editor. When the dialog box appears, we can select the table we want to pick our columns from. I may have one extra table listed here um, that you may not have in your database. I've just been using that for a recent training course. So you can ignore films and sequels. We'll go for the film table. I can double click on that, close down the add table window, and then simply select the columns I'm interested in. So that's title, release date, and then a little further down the list, runtime minutes. We can add a sort order and add a where clause using the filter list here, but I'm not going to bother with any of those things. I'm just going to click OK and then execute that, that query to make sure it returns a sensible set of results. Next, we can add the code that will create the store procedure to return the results of this select statement. So to do that, I'm going to add a blank line or two above my select statement and then write create proc. I could also write the full word procedure, but I don't know why I'd bother when I can just shortcut it to proc. I can optionally state the name of the schema that I want my procedure to be created in. Um, I'm going to use the DBO schema, which is the default schema anyway, so I don't need to specify that. But just as a matter of good practice, let's say DBO dot and then think of a sensible name for the procedure. I'm going to call mine list films using parameters. The one extra word I need to add is the as keyword, and then everything which follows that will become the definition of the procedure. 
Again, making sure that I've got the movies database selected from this drop down list that will dictate which database the procedure is created in. I'm then going to click the execute button and hopefully see the lovely message command completed successfully. As a way to check that that procedure does indeed exist, I can head into the movies database and then expand the programmability folder and then within there expand the store procedures folder. Now I've already got one store procedure created in this database and that's the one that I'm using to populate this example report I showed you earlier. At the moment my new store procedure has not appeared and that's simply because this folder hasn't yet refreshed itself. So if your procedure has not yet appeared I, you can right click on store procedures and choose refresh and then you should find that eventually it will appear in the list. Before we head back to Report Builder and create a data set using this procedure, it's worthwhile giving it a quick test in SQL Server Management Studio. There are several ways you can do this. The simplest by far is just to highlight the name of the procedure by double clicking on it and then click the Execute button and you'll see that it will then return the full list of all the films from the film table. A little later on we'll be testing this using parameters, so I'd like to copy the name of the procedure while it's highlighted and then click the new query button and then at the beginning of this script I'm going to type in the word either exec or execute. Again, I don't know why you'd bother writing the full word execute when you can just write exec and then you can paste in the name of the procedure you've just, you've just copied and then execute that script and again it will return the full list of films. The red squiggly indicates that the syntax checker doesn't recognize the name of the stored procedure yet. And similar to the reason that it didn't immediately appear in my stored procedures folder, it's because the IntelliSense list hasn't refreshed itself. I can force that to refresh by heading back to the edit menu and then choosing IntelliSense and then refresh local cache. Although there is a, short, uh, a keyboard shortcut I could use there as well, Control and Shift and R. Once I've selected that option after a few seconds, eventually the red squiggly will disappear, indicating that now it has been recognized. It wasn't important to do that, of course, you saw that it worked even with the red squiggly, but it's nice and reassuring to see that it's disappeared. Now let's head back to Report Builder and we'll create a data set in here which uses that store procedure. So I'm going to right click on the movie's data source and choose Add Data Set. I'll call this data set Films Using SP short for store procedure of course and then you'll notice there's an option in the middle of the dialog box to select store procedure and when I've done that I'll get a drop down list showing me every procedure I've created in that movie's database. So I'm going to use the one I've just created list films using parameters and then when I click OK my data set will be created populating the list of fields using the select statement stored in that store procedure. So that fits nice and easy. Let's just check that it returns some results to our report as well. It's probably worthwhile tidying up a little first. I'm going to get rid of my page footer and then remove this placeholder title text box. I'll then insert a table into the body of the report. And then I'm going to assign the title, release date and runtime minutes fields. Just a little bit of tidying up. I'm going to make sure that I've selected all the cells in the table and then switch away from the default font and then back to the default font just to clear up that silly font rendering bug that you might have encountered previously and then a tiny bit of basic formatting just to make things look slightly neater i'll assign the date format to the release date as well and then if i run the report i should see a table appears which is populated using the results of that store procedure now let's start adding parameters to the store procedure. I'm going to head back to the design view of Report Builder and then head back to SQL Server Management Studio and the script which we used to create this procedure in the first place. Now you may notice in your own script that the red squiggly has appeared under the name of your procedure and that's because I can't create the procedure again once it already exists. If I attempt to execute that, it says there's already an object named that in the database. So rather than creating the procedure again, we're going to alter it. So the first thing I'm going to do here is change the word create to the word alter. And you'll notice when you've done that, the red squiggly should disappear. And I can execute this script as often as I like. Um, it's not actually doing anything at this point, of course. I'm just redefining the procedure to its existing definition, that basic select statement. 
if you're lucky enough to be working in SQL Server 2017 or later, I believe it was 2017 when this statement appeared, you can also say create or alter. So if the procedure does not already exist, it will be created. If it does exist, it will simply be modified. So you can execute that and then uh, that will work as well. So entirely up to you. But anyway, I know that it already exists. So I'm going to use just the basic alter statement. To add a parameter, I'm going to give myself a blank line after the procedure's name, and then I'm going to make up a name for my parameter. I'll call it at title text. And then I can specify what data type I want this parameter to hold. I'm going to use this parameter to allow the user to filter the films based on their title text, as the name suggests. So a good option for the data type of this parameter is to find out the data type of the column whose values we'll compare it with. So in SQL Server Management Studio, if I find my movies database and expand the tables folder and then expand the film table in there and the columns folder in there, I can see that the title column has a data type of nvarchar255. I can also hover the mouse cursor over the title column in the select statement and it tells me that that's nvarchar as well. It just doesn't tell me the, uh, the maximum length of that. So I'm gonna use the data type nvarchar 255 for the title text parameter. What I'd then like to do is refer to the value of that parameter in the where clause of my query. So I'm going to manually add a where clause. I'm going to add a new line to the bottom and say where, and then I'm going to say uh, title like, and then refer to the title text parameter. So at title text. Having done that, I'm going to execute the script to alter my procedure. Because it now has a parameter which is not optional, I must provide a value to that parameter. I can't simply highlight the procedure's name and execute it. It says I can't do that because it's expecting a parameter which was not supplied. So the reason I created this extra test script is so that I can go back to this one and then type in a space after the uh, procedure name or even give myself a new line and then I can simply enter some text in some single quotes. Technically I suppose as it's an n varchar I should be writing the capital letter n at the beginning of the string but it's not actually vital to do that and then if I execute that procedure now you'll see that it returns all the films beginning with the word star. I can change that again I can say let's go for the word king instead and then execute again, and you'll see that the results are being updated according to the values I've passed in. Uh, the red squiggly reappears because the IntelliSense hasn't refreshed again yet. It hasn't recognized that this parameter, sorry, that the, uh, the procedure has this parameter yet. If I press Control and Shift and R, and then wait for a few seconds, I should find that the red squiggly eventually disappears. And then if I hover the mouse cursor over the procedure name, it shows me in the tooltip that there is indeed a parameter called at title text. So that's how you add a parameter to the procedure and how you reference that parameter in the WHERE clause. Now we need to create that parameter in our report builder report. Let's head back to the design view of that report and we don't have to manually create any parameters here. To get that parameter to appear in the report, we can modify the dataset properties. So I'm going to right click films using SP and choose dataset properties. And then all I need to do is click the Refresh Fields button just below the drop down list where we selected the store procedure. Once I've clicked that button and then clicked OK, I'll find that my report parameter appears automatically, title text. I'll see that both in the parameters panel and in the parameters folder. If I double click on that parameter, I can see its properties. I might modify the prompt here just to make it a little more obvious. Maybe something like enter title text and tell the user that they can use a percentage symbol as a wildcard, just so they have a bit more information. And then I can click OK, run the report, and I should now be able to enter any search string using percentage symbols as wildcards and have the report respond to what I'm typing in. So that's looking pretty good at this point. Before I create any more parameters, I'd like to deal with making this one an optional parameter. Currently, I can't run it unless I pass a value into the title text parameter. 
So to make it an optional report parameter, I can head back to the design view. I can double click on the title text parameter and choose to allow a null value. Once I've done that, I can click OK and then run the report. And I'll find that it does indeed run with, uh, with no value passed into the title text. It just doesn't return any results yet. And that's because I haven't updated my WHERE clause to test whether a null has been returned. So back in the design view, and then back in SQL Server Management Studio, I'm just going to press Ctrl and R to hide my results panel just to give myself a bit more space. And then I'm going to modify the WHERE clause. I'm going to add an extra criterion to the one that already exists. And I'm going to wrap it up in a set of parentheses as well. So title like at title text or at title text is null and then close the parentheses. So what this means when I execute this uh, script to update my procedure, if I go back to my test script, rather than passing in a string of text here, I can enter a null. And then when I execute that script, it returns the full list of all 1200 films. If I replace the null with a valid search string, so I'll just go for the uh, standard ones that I've been using, then the null doesn't exist, so it only returns films which match that search criterion. So 23 rows when I search for films, beginning with the word star. So now that I've done that, I can head back to Report Builder and then I can run the report. And I might need to hit the View Report button to get it to refresh the running of that. It caches the, the previous run of, running of the report until I change something. So if I just hit the View Report button again, it is now returning all the films. Uh, but if I uncheck the box, the null box, and then type in a valid search string, it returns films which match that string. Let's add some more parameters to our store procedure back in SQL Server Management Studio. I'll head back to the script which I'm using to modify my procedure and hit Ctrl and R to hide the results panel. To add more parameters, all you need to do is write a comma separated list between the parameter, uh, the store procedure's name and the word as. So just before the word as, I'll add a new line starting with a comma and then I'll say at min runtime. And the data type that I want to use, I'm going to compare it with a runtime minutes column. That's a small int. So we'll use small int there. And then I'll add a second parameter or a third parameter, I should say. Uh, I'll call this one at max runtime. And that will also be a small int. And then I can reference those two parameters in the where clause. And I'm going to make sure that it, I can leave them empty as well, I'll leave them as null. So I'm going to add an and keyword. And then in some parentheses, I'm going to refer to the runtime minutes field. And I'm going to check if that's greater than or equal to at min runtime. Or I'm going to check that the min runtime parameter is null. And then again at the end, I'll say and. And in a new set of parentheses, ask if runtime minutes is less than or equal to at max runtime. Or at max runtime is null. So fairly repetitive, um, but hopefully also fairly straightforward. If I execute this script to update the procedure, I should now be able to highlight the procedure's name and hit execute. But I can't run that without passing a value into each of the parameters. This is getting a bit tedious. I'd like to be able to very quickly test this without having to write out null for every parameter I create. So as well as creating optional parameters in Report Builder, you can also create optional parameters in a store procedure. At the end of each parameter's definition, I'm going to assign a default value of null to each one. So I'm just going to say equals null at the end. So when I execute the script to update the definition of the procedure, I can now highlight the procedure's name and click execute and see the full list of all 1200 films. If I wanted to test it out in the other script and check that it's still working, if I enter values for the second and third parameters, I can do that just by writing a comma separated list. Again, the IntelliSense hasn't updated yet. If I press Ctrl and Shift and R, I should find that the red squiggly disappears shortly. 
there are many other ways to, to write out this sort of uh, query as well. If I wanted to test just the max runtime parameter, then I don't want to have to pass a value of null to each of the other two, although I could do it that way. Um, so that will find all the films whose runtime is less than or equal to 150. But because I've made these two or three parameters, I should say, optional, I don't actually have to pass a value into any of those parameters. I can just refer to the one I'm interested in. So that would be at max runtime equals and then the value that I want to pass into it. And if I run it again, it returns all the films less than 150, all the films less than 100 minutes, etc., etc. So now that we've done that, we've updated the store procedure, we can simply head back to Report Builder, head back to the design view, right click on the data set, choose data set properties, and click refresh fields. Then when I click OK, I'll see my two new parameters have appeared. I'm just going to reposition those so they sit below the original parameter, and then I'm just going to delete these extra columns. I shan't need those in the parameters grid. I'm going to double click each of the two new parameters and make sure that I allow a null value. You can see that the data type has been set automatically based on the data type of the store procedure parameter. So I'll do that for min runtime and for max runtime, allow null values. And then I can run the report and I can see that I get the full list of 1200 films to begin with. But now I can optionally provide a value to any of these parameters, um, any single one, any combination, I'll always return results according to just the ones that I filled in. Just to complete the set, I'm going to add two more parameters to allow the user to pick a start date and an end date, and we'll compare that against the release date column. I'm going to pretend that I'm going to add these extra parameters at a much later stage of the process. So I'm going to pretend that I didn't already have these scripts open. I'm going to head back to the Management Studio and close down the scripts that I've been working on without saving the changes. And the good news is you don't need the original scripts whenever you want to modify a store procedure. If I head back to my movies database on the left hand side in the store procedures folder, any store procedure I can right click on and choose to modify. So I've right clicked last uh, list films using parameters and I can select the modify option to return a system generated script which contains all the code which defines that store procedure. I get a bunch of extra junk code at the top. I don't really need all of this, although it's interesting to, to, to understand what these do. I, I might explain those in a separate video, but um, you can quite happily get rid of all of the additional code at the top of the script and just focus on everything from alter proc downwards. I am going to add a couple of extra new parameters. So in my parameter list, I'll create one called at start date. And I'll call this, I'll use date time for this as that's the data type of the release date column. And I'll assign a default value of null to that. And then at end date, date time equals null. I can then add some more criteria to my where clause. So I can say and, and I can say release date is greater than or equal to at start date or at start date is null and release date is less than or equal to at end date or at end date is null. So there we go. Having added all that extra code, I'm going to execute the script to update my procedure. And then because I have assigned a default value to all of the parameters, I can just highlight the procedure's name and click execute to return all 1200 results. I could then create another script to test this by passing in different dates, uh, but I'm quite happy that this is going to work at this point. I'm going to head back to report builder, head back to the design view, right click films using SP and choose dataset properties, click the refresh fields button and then click OK to get my start date and end date parameters. I will double click each of these, check that the data type has been set correctly to date time, and then allow a null value for each. And then having done all that, I can run my report once more and I'll see all five parameters exist. I'm returning all of my films. 
I can uncheck any combination of parameters and enter values for whichever ones I like. And then viewing the report, we'll use the values I've entered to filter the list. So there you go, that's how you generate parameters in Report Builder by populating your data sets using stored procedures. I personally find that the easiest way to create parameters, it's the least amount of work, and you'll potentially get performance benefits, certainly performance benefits over using simple report parameters to filter tables, and potentially even performance benefits over using ad hoc queries in which you define your parameters. If you're interested in reading a bit more about that, then there's an article on the, the Microsoft Docs site, which explains how store procedures work and the various benefits of using store procedures. So I'd recommend that as a bit of further reading to explain why it's, uh, it's potentially potentially useful to use store procedures for your reports. Anyway, hope you found that one useful. Thanks for watching. See you next time.